you might be wondering, oh man, you got a brand new set behind you. No, 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 no. My set's fine. I just can't film in there today. So I went to my DVD wall instead. Let me know what you thought of the movie Dumb Money down below in the comments. What did you think of this film? Was this a great comedy of a true story? Or did you just think it was only eh? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. Today we're talking about the 2023 based on a true story, financial comedy kind of film, Dumb Money. This film is based on the true story. Everyday people flipped the script on Wall Street and the hedge fund managers and got rich by turning GameStop into a hot stock company. At the center, fueling the movement, is Keith Gill, who sinks his life savings into the stock and posts about it on his YouTube channel. When his social media blows up, as does his life and his earnings, it causes the billionaires to fight back and both sides have their worlds turned upside down because of this. Upside down. Directed by Craig Gillespie, who had directed other films such as I, Tonya, which I did enjoy that movie. To start off with, I wasn't like particularly excited about this film. I wasn't like, you know, super looking forward to it. It wasn't even in my radar for the top 10 films that I've anticipated for this year. I knew who Keith Gill was, but I didn't know the full extent. So I was excited to see this movie to kind of learn more about this story. One of the best parts about this film is the story itself. The fact that Keith Gill really did this, that he had helped begin this movement of everyday people turning the tides against Wall Street. And the true story of this only happened, you know, a couple years ago, back in 2021. Hello darkness, my old friend. Overall, this was a pretty cool and fun, interesting, and it's also a very important movie and story at its center. I think this is a film that everyone should watch just cause, even if you're not really into finances or, or Wall Street or stocks or anything like that, that's fine, you don't need to be. I think what's important is the message, what is happening in our society now with like, you know, taking down celebrities and taking down the uber rich and uh, making people more accountable. I think this film reflects that movement and reflects that feeling that most people have. And you get to see this like class warfare between the uber rich and the everyday working person. I think this movie depicts that really well. This movie is set during COVID times. Like they are in mass for a lot of the movie, like not the entire time, but a lot of times some of these characters are in mass almost the entire time. Like last year in Glass Sun in a Knives Out Mystery, set it during COVID times, but they, they get a reason to get rid of the mass in the first like 10 minutes of the film. This movie doesn't do that. It, it's like, no, we there is a pandemic and these essential workers were on the front lines and always having these masks on. It doesn't detract from the film, but just be aware of that when you go to see it. Like there are a lot of scenes where people are talking in masks. On the topic about talking, the dialogue in this movie is great. I really enjoyed the way that the characters spoke. It felt real. It felt like actual people in real life. This is how they talk. And I enjoy that. I don't like when movies either try and spruce it up. So it's like, it's Aaron Sorkin level. Love Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin heads don't come for me. Get him! It's not very dramatized. Like it's trying to tell a true life story. And also while trying to tell this story in a compelling way that captures audiences sit there the whole time. A part of that is this great dialogue that holds us in and I thought was excellent in this film. 11 fucking million dollars? What are you gonna do? Get a Ferrari? What the fuck? Oh, language, the baby's here. The performances are solid in this film. Paul Dano as Keith Gill, I thought was fantastic in this movie. It's definitely the standout. And he's the lead of the movie. I mean, he is phenomenal. I've always been a fan of Paul Dano. I love his work. The other standout in this movie was actually Pete Davidson who I don't love, but I don't hate either. This movie, I thought, was one of his best he's ever done. I thought he was hilarious. He is definitely a big contributor for the comedic tone in this movie. He has some of the best lines. He's got some of the most memorable moments. And I thought Shailene Woodley did a fairly good job too. Besides those three characters, everyone else in this movie either feels like they're a representative for uh, either a class of people or a race of people. They feel like they're representatives for like the uber rich or the billionaires. And you don't get really a lot of character development with those people. Their characters are representatives of things in society. So you don't really get too emotionally attached to them. And it's really just Paul Dano's character that centers the heart of the film. This is a very much an ensemble piece. And I like that. I just wish there was a bit more character development. 
but this movie isn't interested in doing that. It's not trying to dive deep into these characters. It's trying to tell this story, make it interesting and compelling enough to make the audience stay there for an hour and 45 minutes. But for me, like if I don't get attached to the characters, I have a hard time fully jumping in and investing into the movie. Investing, no pun intended. Stop fucking up. This is very important. And so this movie tries to make things simple and not trying to overcomplicate things. And that is great in some ways because some of the jargon, some of the language, some of the financial stuff in this movie, I could see that it would be very drab and dry and kind of boring, but they actually present it in a very interesting and fun way. Like the editing in this film is fantastic. It's so well edited and the cutting between social media and real life, you know, direct talking straight into the camera shots. And I thought the editing in this film was very good. This movie's only like an hour and 45 minutes long and that's perfect. Like the pacing of this movie is excellent. Music was also great. I love the soundtrack to this film. They literally use WAP at the beginning in this hilarious slow motion scene. Wars in this house. Yes, this movie is funny. There are some laugh out loud, hilarious moments, but I think the movie wanted to be funnier than what it actually was. So much what happens in this film is like, woo, wow, that's crazy. Holy fucking shit. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. And it's repeated over and over, over again in the film. And it's funny, but then also at the same time as you're watching kind of like what's happening, it's not funny. So yes, it is a dark comedy, but I felt like there were times where the comedy just didn't hit. The directing in this film, I have to say, I was a little let down by Craig Gillespie. Some of his other films look and felt a lot better and they had um, more interesting filmmaking to it. There was a lot more thought out shots. There were some great cinematography. This film was kind of maybe his least. Ugh. Are the worst. There wasn't really any sort of magical filmmaking or things that made me go, whoa, that was really cool. That shot really pinned down who this character is and what they're feeling. I didn't quite get that in this film. The filmmaking and the style and the tone was just kind of like drab and just there and blah. <laughs> doesn't do anything cool or stylistic. I don't think they were trying to do anything cool or stylistic with this movie. Instead of telling sort of a basic, easy breezy, crowd pleasing movie. And this just felt almost generic, orthodox, when this is an unorthodox story. Felt like the filmmaking should have reflected that. In the hands of another director, I think this movie could have been a lot better. Still put together a good, decent film. I wanted to really love this movie, I did. But I think I just ended up liking it. I thought it was crowd pleasing. It feels both simultaneously risky, and yet safe. Before I give my final thoughts on this film, please make sure you click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Let me know what did you think of Dumb Money? Was this one of your favorite films of the year? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for the comments down below. So overall, I had a good time with this movie. I was thoroughly entertained. I thought the story was excellent. The dialogue and the writing was fantastic. Some really good performances, wonderful editing to this movie. And I love the soundtrack, but the filmmaking overall itself of the directing, the style, the tone, and even the cinematography and the way that this film is shot felt a little lackluster or generic. This is a movie that I think you can wait for it to come out on VOD or, or on streaming, whenever that happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Dumb Money a B. Thank you so much for checking out Mr. Teach Film Preach. Come back and check out some other videos like A Haunting in Venice, the top 10 anticipated films that are left in 2023, and Bottoms. Have a great day, everyone. Stay focused, stay awesome, and as always, let's get taught.